tap, tap in. Tap, 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 tap, tap in. Welcome to Tap In Tuesday, and I'm your host, Titi from the D, and I want to thank you in advance for stopping by and tapping in to join me and several of my amazing guests this evening. I want to thank you in advance because there are several other podcast platforms that you could have tapped into, but you chose to tap in with us, and we are grateful. We are excited. I have a hot show lined up for you with some amazing authors and writers and entrepreneurs, to say the least. I want to also apologize because I've been having some technical difficulties. If you joined us last week, I had some technical difficulties last week and I was like, oh, MGZ. And so the show must go on. I had some laughter with uh, some of my authors. Super dope. I love the positive energy. It's always amazing when you get a bunch of people that have good energy, positive vibes. It helps when things go sideways. But you know that old saying, when you get lemons, you make lemonade. I like to make an honor palm more because you would, you know, give me a little bit of tea because it's a little bitter. And then you have your lemonade and then you can make you an, a really good honor palmer. So tonight I need you to make sure that you take notes. There is an author that will tap into, I guarantee you, something that you've been thinking about, an area of life that you've been battling or thinking about things and not really sure how to place it, situations and circumstances that you might have dealt with in honor of Mental Health Awareness Month. We'll tap into a few things with there. We'll keep it honest to an hour tonight. You know, we tend to go over because it gets hot and fiery, but I'm already going to predict. I've already talked to my ladies and gentlemen and let them know that we're going to have a part two. With that being said, I'm going to go ahead and get this party started. I'm going to do my introductions and the first person, the first better up, uh, no, they're not better up, the first writer up, I think I like that, that's kind of cute. I think the first writer up that we're going to have join us is my, uh, my, my life partner. He's my husband, he's my bestie, he's an a entrepreneur, he's a serial entrepreneur, and you might say, well, TT, who are you talking about? You might not know who I'm married to, so let me kill my camera because you didn't come to see me. So let's put this guy out there. This guy, his name is Swifty McVeigh, but he's Mr. Moore to me, right? He is a part of Eminem's group D12. Um, he's a man in his own right. He is a man on a mission. I am very proud of him because he also is an author of his own autobiography. And what's amazing about Swifty's uh, book is that it is audio. And I have aspirations and goals to do a book in the future. And I definitely have always thought about prior to it becoming a popular thing. I think I was inspired by Terry McMillan, but uh, I've always wanted to do audio. And so I'm very happy and excited to uh, welcome to the panel um, my husband, who's my friend. He's a homie, Mr. Swifty McVay. Yes, 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 Miss TT from the D. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Thanks for having me on the show. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm going to go go get some of your sisters and some of you, and one of your brothers because you got another go. brother joining you tonight. And uh, I'll be right back for you. Okay. Let's go. Cool beans. Cool beans. All right. So next better up. Let's see. Let's see. Next we got up. I think I'm going to bring to the table dun, 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 this young lady right here. This young lady name is Sharnice Hogan. And She's a beautiful person. I've had not the pleasure of meeting her face to face, but we have uh, text together uh, to death. Like I'm a texter. If you know me, then you already know I text you to pieces. Uh, we're always on the go. People like myself and her, 
you're always schedules just don't always align. And so I was introduced by way of her amazing book by one of her relatives who's a really good friend. Um, but she's also my tax preparer. So if you haven't gotten your taxes done, I need you to get that under control. But I'm going to bring this serial entrepreneur, this amazing woman on because her story and testimony that she put in book form is amazing. So without any further ado, I'd like to bring to the panel, Miss Shanice Hogan. How are you? Hey, I'm doing wonderful. Thank you for allowing me to be a part of this podcast. I'm doing wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Queen. I appreciate you for taking time out yes. and stopping by and getting ready to feed the people. Uh, yes. This this food that you got in that book is a great cookbook. Now, for you, that, those of you that are greedy like me, I'm not talking about the food that you eat. Okay. I'm talking about the spiritual book. Spiritual. I'm talking yes. about the stuff that's going to help you grow mentally, emotionally, spiritually. That yes. cookbook. Okay. Yes. All right, Queen. So, I'll be back, Swifty. This is Sharnice. Sharnice, this is Swifty. Hi, nice to meet you. Hey. Awesome, awesome, awesome. God All bless. right, so I'll be right back, ladies, or lady and gentleman. In a minute, we'll be plural. Okay, so I'll be right back. Next up, batters up. We're going to bring this lady. Now, let me bring this woman. Let me tell you, I stalked her on social media. I was scrolling through. I love to just look at different things on social media outside the box. And... I, there was a, I uh, think she did an interview. I can't remember what station. And I was thinking like, dang, it sounded interesting. And it had to deal with trauma and, and you know, domestic violence. And I'm a child survivor of domestic violence. And so I was thinking like, oh, she's very interesting. So I took a leap of faith, inboxed her and said, hey, I'd love to know if you'd be a guest on my show. I know you're all the way in Florida <laughs> and I'm all the way in the deep, but I would like to know if you you know, be a guest. And she says, sure. I said, wow. And when I tell you talking with her prior to our interview was amazing. During our talk prior to the interview, I could tell she was picking me apart because she's a doctor. Okay. She was picking me apart without her knowing, but I felt like I was sitting on her couch. I was actually on my couch, but I felt like I was sitting on her couch and I felt weight lifted after that interview. And I, text her and told her, thank you so much. I enjoyed it. Wanted her to come back. And she said, it was my pleasure. I enjoyed it. And if you ever want to talk, I got you free of charge. And I thought to myself, oh, no, oh, oh. And so from there, uh, a bomb was created. So without any further ado, I would like to bring this amazing woman to the panel, Dr. Laura Streffler. How are you, Queen? How are you? I am good. I am on the other side of the stomach virus. So I am good. <laughs> Amen to that. I just got over it myself. So I, yeah. Oh yeah. man, just, just feeling everyday regular. I feel like a million plus tax. Okay. Okay. That's mm -hmm. awesome. Awesome. I want to thank you also for being one of the panelists tonight to talk about your book. Just like I was saying about Sharnice's book, your book, so much, so much to talk about in there. And I know we can't put it all out, but I know that you're awesome about putting things out, summing things up, putting it together. But in health, in light of mental health awareness, I really believe your book is going to be something that people will really, 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 really be able to relate to, um, especially the cover of it. I'm going to go back for one hot second. See, um, just real quick, I just want to show you guys this because it caught me, like the wife beater. Oh, wow. Well, and it is important to remember on the other side, on the back side of the book, is a woman and a wife beater. The, the, yeah. the term wife beater is because it's important to remember is because that's what they call the white T-shirts and it's looking at the myths. But, yeah. you know, especially with gender roles changing and all sorts of things, you know, it's that we have a lot of male victims, too. Females aren't the you know, the only victim. So absolutely. <laughs> See, don't give it away yet, Doc. Don't well, but I think it's important because when they look at it, it's all it's like, oh, you know, I think it's important to get the message out that it does go both ways. Yes, it That's does. So it's a, it's an unfortunate two way but, street. But men can be, you know, usually in different relationships, you know, there's a whole lot of it's a whole separate conversation that I don't want to have about mutual abuse. But you know, it's usually the, there's a primary aggressor in the relationship and the primary yes. aggressor more and more are women. Yeah. Ooh, hold that thought. Wow. Okay. I will be right back for you guys. I'm going to get some more of our friends. I'm super excited about tonight. Next up on the panel, 
Let me go to the photos. And I just love the photos you guys submitted. That That's something I had to pick. Some of y'all sent some things. I'm thinking like, how do I go in between? The options were amazing. So next up, I'm going to bring this queen. She's not only a serial entrepreneur, she's not only an author, she's an amazing chef. She's also the very first client that I ever had the opportunity to have when I stepped out on faith to start my own business. Uh, she saw my raw talent and uh, she took a chance with me and I've been rocking with her ever since. But she's also an entertainer. She's an amazing singer as well. And her book, The Million Dollar Struggle, is amazing. Um, she has the audio version as well as the, um, you know, the one you can put on your candle and things of that nature. So without any further ado, I'd like to bring this queen to the forefront. Miss Kimiana Zanye. Hey. Good evening, everybody. Hello. How are you? Hey. hey. <laughs> How are you? Very well, very well. Thank you for taking time out of your schedule, because you know I know your schedule, so uh, <laughs> for, for making sure that you were able to show up uh, to do this roundtable. I appreciate you. I already yeah. told uh, the ladies uh, prior to you and Swifty joining, before I start bringing you in, that we're going to have a part two. I'm going to have to okay. work it out because everybody got 50,000 things they do, but we definitely going to have to have a part two. I predicted, I see it. We might even have to have a part three. So, and I'm, I'm, I'm for it. I'm here for it because what you have to offer the world and people that are avid readers or listeners for those that do audio um, is priceless. You know, a lot of your books have made it to amazing book clubs, authors, bestseller list. Um, so I'm very honored and very humbled to have you guys tonight and i'm gonna go back and get some more of the guests to come back in so we can get this party started officially so i'll be right back for you guys <laughs> all right next batter up next we got on the menu next we're gonna bring this gentleman we're gonna bring another man in here even off the playing field just a little bit we're gonna dominate tonight but fellas i i want to give y'all some friends so this gentleman has um been in the industry for a long time prior to being the ceo of his own label he also, a lot of people don't know, a fun fact is that uh, he has a skill set like Twisted. So he's also an artist. Um, he is also the manager to several amazing artists. Um, his wife, which is the queen, the first lady of Benjamin Entertainment Group, Christina Benjamin. Also, he manages Dodie Alexander and the one and only Beth from Detroit, Michigan as well, and several other people from other different states. Uh, Courtney took his knowledge and put a little bit, and I'm gonna say a little bit because he has enough knowledge to fill up probably several books, but the business of being an artist is phenomenal. He's also traveling around to different states and he's also educating people by having one-on-one -on -one, face to face um, meetings and seminars. So without any further ado, I would like to bring to the table, Mr. Courtney Benjamin. What's hey, going Courtney? on? Hello. Thank you. What's happening? What's happening? Hey, everybody. Hey. Hey. What's happening? Hey. So, What's Courtney, happening? thank you so much. Uh, as I said to my ladies and my gentlemen over there, I appreciate you for taking time out. I know, like, you all over the place. I didn't even know if you was going to be on ground when it was this time of day because, like, you'd be in different time zones. So, I was like, uh. What if you're like, yeah, you're on I just a flight got back. Or something? I know. I was like, what if you're on a flight? Like, uh -oh. just got back. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate you. I appreciate you. No problem. No yes, problem. Yes, yes, yes. So I'm coming back. I'm going to get some more of our friends. We got a full house on tonight, and I'm super pumped. So I'm going out. <laughs> Next, better up on the bid. We're going to bring, let me see. Doo, 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 doo. We're going to bring a really good friend of mine who is also. Um, my youngest son's godmother, and oh, let me bring. Oh, let me see here. I'm still trying to navigate this thing, y'all. Hold tight, hold tight. Let me see here. Uh oh, here we go. Here we go. So, am I in my, in my own schedule? Like, am I on my own thing? Can y'all see me? Can y'all still see me? No, no. Oh, mm -mm. okay. No. I'm on my smartphone and my phone ain't acting the smartest right about now. Okay, there we go. All right, here we go. There we go. So, as I was saying, this is a really good friend of mine. I call her a sister. She's a sister friend. She's also my youngest son's godmother. She's a serial entrepreneur as well. She's an amazing author. She's also an RN. Um, she works in one of the most 
what, what's the, what I want to say? Most visited. <laughs> That's not even proper English. So for all my English friends that teach English, don't come for me today. Not, not today. But she's her, the hospital she works at is the number one in Michigan trauma center. Now, that ain't that we should be celebrating like, oh, but I'm so super proud of her because she's a part of that team. If there's anybody that's going to be working on the loved one when it's trauma, which is that that serious seriousness, you would definitely, depending on the time of the day, you definitely might luck up and have Melanie Smiles on your team, your trauma team. And she's definitely somebody who would want to work on you. So without any further ado, I'm going to bring to the forefront, Miss Melanie Smiles. Hi. Hey. Hello, on? everyone. Hi. What's happening? Hey. hey. Thank you thank for you. taking time. Oh, thank you for having me on your podcast with all these amazing other authors. <laughs> well, thank you. I thought the mix was going to be phenomenal. Y'all all bring something different. And that's one of the things I love about tonight. So I got a few more of our friends out there. <laughs> I'll be right back. Okay. So I'm so glad that you guys were able to take time out. And I promise you, I'm going to get you in. I don't know about getting you out. Say no, I'm playing. I'm going to get you. But I'm going to get you in and I'm going to get y'all out. So I'll be right back. Okay. So next up, next up, we have this amazing queen. Now, this woman here is phenomenal. She is a sister friend to me. She's also one of our ministers of dance uh, for our church. She's a ministry leader there. She is getting ready to implement something in our church. And I'm thankful that she is going to allow me to utilize my skill set. Some people don't know that um, I have my BA in uh, criminal justice, but I also was working on my master's in counseling. And so what she's getting ready to do, along with several other amazing pastors and ministers there, along with our lead pastor, is going to blow the minds of a lot of our members. But one thing about her, she catapulted herself into using her story like many other authors have to create this book and i thought like wow if i couldn't have her tonight it would have been sad but she made time because she's also always on the go whether she teaching or she's educating um she's just always giving back so i'm super excited to bring mrs darnisi calvin to the building <laughs> what's going on <laughs> Hi. <laughs> can you hear? Oh, can, oh, you're muted. Did I mute you? Did I mute you? Oh, okay. Okay. Hi, everybody. Hey. hey. What's How's going everybody on? doing? Well, good. 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 I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to have you. <laughs> I'm happy to have you. Yes. I think we have all of our guests. One of our artists, uh, authors, could not make it. Her schedule didn't allow to allow her. And she just kind of wrapped up working. And so I was bummed out because she's super dope. Randy Rosario, she has her own uh, radio station, her own media company. She's a serial entrepreneur. She's she's a, she's funny as hell. She's a comedian and all right. She slept on that calling. She's a mom, wife, just like many of you, doing a whole lot. And she's like, sis, I'm not going to be able to tap in. I'm just kidding. I was like, it's all good. So she said, I will jump on the next one. I'm like, it's all good. I predict we'll have a part two. So firstly, let me say thank you to each and every one of you guys tonight for taking time out of your busy schedule. Every one of you, ladies and gentlemen, are very busy. I know that personally and indirectly. And I'll see you. And so... What you have to offer, I felt like I wanted to use my platform to inspire, encourage, and motivate others, and then just give you one more listening audience person, one more reader to add to your list. So thank you in advance for an amazing show. I predicted it's going to be amazing. So thank you in advance for your time. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Awesome. So firstly, because we have a lot, I'm going to try to stay We. I'm going to stay true. I'm going to stay to the hour. I'm going to try. Anyway, um, I would like to go around and do your own introduction. I did my little quick run through, but I want to go around and let you all tell the viewers and the listeners a little bit about who you are and about your book. Some of you have written several, but your 
book that you know you and I communicated about, let's tap into that one. Um, and then we'll jump right into the meat and potatoes. So, Swifty, you're my husband, but you happen to be right next to me. And we're going to go in order that I think I brought y'all in. Kind of a little bit, maybe. I don't know. The way it looks to me, I'm on my smartphone, so I don't know how smart it is. But um, I'm going to go in the order that I see y'all, according to my little screen. So, tell us who you are, Swifty, and about your book. Yeah, my name is Swifty McVeigh. I'm a Detroit native. Um, I'm a part of a group called D12. Been signed to Shady Records for a little over 20 years now. I'm an actor. I'm an author. Um, I got an audio book called The Seventh Star that I actually came out with three years ago, wait, three to four years ago. And I decided to tell my fans, you know, my story as far as how I got connected with D12 and, um, things of that nature. And not only well, but my story as far as me growing up and what inspired me to become an artist and all the trials and tribulations I went through as a youngster and as a teenager. And, um, just to let them know, this music is all I've been wanting to do. And people have been inquiring about my story. So I just decided to write a story uh, about how I got signed, what happened after uh, when, when Proof died. And it's just a, a whole life story just uh, balled up in one in a three-hour conversation. So uh, just glad to be here. And thank you for having me. Well, thank you. I appreciate you. Um... Your your book, I was saying when I was kind of doing a small little inter, interlude, um, I was inspired by Terry McMillan. I, I'm a Terry McMillan fan. And so, um, and, and Yana, uh, Van Zandt, Yana Van Zandt, and their books that I had time to listen to were all audio. Kim Yana's book is audio as well. And I'm a, I'm a, I'm a listener. Like I like, to, I like to listen when I'm doing things, driving and things like, and sometimes when I get a hold to an audio book that'll make me stop, that's when I know, like, even when I get a book and I'm reading it, like, oh, dang, and it make you want more and more. But when you listen and you're like, dang, it's just like listening to the Bible. I don't know if you guys have listened. When I listened to the Bible experience, it was amazing. All the sound effects, I'm one of them people. And so to hear your book and, you know, just listen, like I know your story, but even I learned some things that I didn't know um was was dope and i think that people would really enjoy listening to your book thank you thank yeah. you next up we have sharnice hogans hello everybody i am sharnice hogans i was born and raised in detroit michigan um i went to the detroit public schools um i'm a mother of four beautiful children four boys and one daughter uh, the name of my book is entitled Hurt No More, Released from the Prison of Unforgiveness. Um, my book, as a child growing up, I went through a lot. I seen a lot. I heard a lot. And not just me. I saw other people, family and friends. And I believe the Lord placed it on my heart to put a book together to let people know that you can overcome the adversary. The enemy is so busy and there's so much hurt and pain in this world. And we all have a story. Everybody have a story and everybody's story is different. But I just want to encourage everybody to let you know you can be healed, set free and delivered in spite of what your story is. Um, the hurt. The betrayal, the devastation, the grief, I can relate to it. I, um, in the story, in my book, uh, the character went through a lot. Um, my book is fiction, but real, realism is in it. And what I mean by that is the characters in the book have real stories. And I just believe that this book will help so many people um, because people feel that they're uh, stuck. Some, so many people are hurting and don't know how to deal with it. So many people feel like, okay, this is it. I just have to accept it. But you do not. You do not have to be stuck. You do not have to be stagnated. You can be set free and you can be healed. And one thing that I love is that trouble does not last always. You can be set free from it. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm encouraged. I believe that this book will help so many people. And the way the Lord gave it to me, um, first of all, I started the book and I would pick it up, put it down. But then when this pandemic hit and working from home and the world was closed down, 
I said, let me complete this. And I felt like, okay, I'm giving birth to my baby. I'm about to give birth to this baby. So um, my book is, again, entitled Hurt No More, Release from the Prison of Forgiveness, and you can be set free from it. So. Okay, come on now. <laughs> I told y'all bring up paper and pen, crayon, marker, eyeliner, whatever you need to write. <laughs> You're going to want to get the information. Um, and I'll let y'all, of course, before we end. I was trying to put everybody hashtags and, and your websites in the scrolling part, but I realized you can only do 200 characters. And because I have several thousand authors tonight, I was like, oh, I can't. Oh, oh. I said, you know what? As long as they know their names, okay? Because everybody know how to Google. You everybody got a smartphone. If your phone can't find people, your phone ain't smart. So um, <laughs> get on a desktop or something like that. So next up, we have Dr. Laura, who I stalked from Florida. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Laura, tell us about your book and a little bit about who you are. Well, my name's Laura Streffler. Um, I am a survivor of domestic violence. I left a relationship when I was 27, a six year relationship, um, and started over with two suitcases and $175. And um, in about 1989, I started working in a domestic violence shelter. And since then, my area of practice, I've been a therapist, well, a counselor that long, a therapist almost that long. Um, is domestic and sexual violence and other types of, of trauma. Um, now I have a private practice and I do, you know, pretty much everything, but that's the foundation. I mean, in this day and age, I see very few people that haven't experienced some type of trauma. Um, the book, the initial book that I wrote that we're talking about is called Wife Beater Shirt Optional. There is no dress code for domestic violence. And I began writing it probably 15 years before it came out. And originally it was going to be for clinical professionals because therapists really didn't understand domestic violence um, or sexual violence in relationships. And they blame victims or they would um, re-victimize them or put them in danger during couples therapy. And I wanted them to really understand about the dynamics, you know, we all go to these trainings, the cycle of violence and power and control, you know, it's this one or two hour training that's like this textbook basic training and people are like, okay, I got it. Well, you know, it's much bigger than that. Um, and so I kept moving words around and I just wasn't ready. And by the time the book came out, I thought, you know, I'm seeing more and more people that are in abusive relationships that you know believe these myths of what it's supposed to look like and they don't even realize that the relationship is abusive because it's their normal um and you know what i tell people for most people what's normal is very different than what's healthy and so because maybe the relation the family of origin that they grew up in or the relationship before was more violent or was different, you know, compared to that relationship. It's like, well, this doesn't really count and not really understanding the dynamics and what was going on. So I, I wrote the book, um, you know, like Sharnice, it's, it's composites, you know, all the stories are real, um, but I didn't want to violate anybody by using one story. So I kind of, you know, was like animals. I mix and matched all the different stories of 35 years of working with um, victims of domestic violence and made little snippets to illustrate everything I was talking about in the book. I, one of my favorite chapters that I think... I, I really, if people skip, you know, the rest of it is how to assess lethality and, you know, the questions that you should ask and why the answers are important. And then based on that, the following chapter is how to safety plan accordingly. Mm -hmm. You know, um, TT, like you said, you know, anybody can check Dr. Google, but, you know, now you can look up narcissist abuse is a hot topic. People are talking about it. You know, you know, now every time, you know, somebody acts like a jerk, you know, they're like, oh, am, am I dating a narcissist? You know, and it really you have to separate somebody just being not nice from somebody that's really being controlling and um, and abusive and potentially can be, um, you know, dangerous. Um, but I think people need to really pay attention to what their partners are not only saying, but what they're not saying and, and to their gut. 
You know, if your gut's telling you something doesn't feel right, then it's yeah. not. I agree. I, I Like I said, I'm a child survivor of domestic violence. And I, I got that feeling when I was a child. I, I couldn't, I didn't understand. Of course, I was a kid. So I didn't know, but I kind of could tell when my parents was getting ready to fight or it was about to get ugly. And one time, like people don't know this about me, um, popcorn, the smell of popcorn sometimes triggers it because I remember one very violent time popcorn was being made. And so that moving forward when I was a kid, when I would smell popcorn, it sometimes did something to me. As much as I like popcorn, sometimes the fresh smell of it, it depends on what my mindset is. It might make me go back. So, yeah, you're right. That makes and, perfect sense. Yeah. yeah. Yes, it does. Yeah. So true. Yeah. So next up, we have Kimyana Zanye. Kimyana, would you tell people a little bit about you and about your book? Good evening, everybody. So, <laughs> um. Of course, she said my name several times now, Kimyana Zanye. I have been pinned the queen of create your own opportunity. And why that is, is I'm, I'm that person where um, you have a dream, you have a goal, you have something that you, you want to do. Um, if you've been told no a hundred times, then we're going to create a yes. So I'm that, <laughs> I'm that person that, um, likes to push people, including my, myself, um, to, to kind of go to that next level. So the multi-million dollar struggle, executing uh, your ideas and turning your, pas your passion into purpose is really just about um, that internal voice um, that you have that always tells you that you can't do something. Um, but you don't know how to do it or you don't know the process of how to do it. Um, it gives you steps on how to do that. It, it talks about love. It talks about maintaining um, solid relationships um, and having healthy emotional mental balance while you're trying to still, um, you know, create this business or life or whatever it is that you're doing. Um, it's a lot. It's a lot of good information, valuable information in the book. Um, so I'm excited. I'm excited about being here. Thank you, TT, again for having me um, and you giving me the opportunity to talk about my book. You are welcome. You're welcome. Um, you, I, your book, like I said, I had the opportunity to, when you were doing a special uh, during the pandemic, um, the audio version of it, amazing. Mm -hmm. Like I was at work, working, I was working. Okay. I was at work and I was working, but I was listening and I was just, the t I was in the zone. Like I, I was, I think I was working on some logs and I'm just yeah. listening and it, it, it just got intense <laughs> and more, you know, and the chapters was just like, oh, okay. And mm. before I knew it was over, I'm like, damn, this is the whole book. That, oh, <laughs> okay. I was like, yeah. oh, it's done. Okay. It's done. Okay. Cause it yeah. was just so good to listen to. So yeah, I'm excited about you. what you're doing and I Thank appreciate you. your Yes, yes. And yes. I just wanted to say this really quick. So I yes. actually recorded my own audio. That was really important to me because I wanted my listeners to be able to feel certain parts of the book and certain inflections and certain things. It's kind of like, you know, the artist in me, I guess. Um, if you sing or if you rap or, or whatever you do, you do poetry you there's there's a connection you know with the artist and so i did i did my, i did my own um um audio book and that was an interesting process but it was great and i wouldn't have it any other way so every book after this one i'm definitely doing my own audio super dope swifty you did your own audio too right yeah i actually recorded my own audio um yeah. I had the uh, i can't remember what position he was he was actually online uh, not coaching me what to say, but, you know, was really telling me, the, you know, giving me um, audio book etic etiquette or what, mm. you know. Okay. So you know, I say the wrong word that I thought it was right. He'd be like, no, maybe you should say this or whatever. But I actually recorded it in my own studio as well. Okay, yeah. Kim and uh, Swifty, okay. So <laughs> next up, we have Courtney Benjamin. Courtney, tell the people about you and your book. Okay. I'm Courtney Benjamin. Um, I'm a music legacy builder. My book is called uh, Business of Being an Artist. And, you know, just like uh, Swifty and uh, Kimyana, 
you know, they they recorded their own uh, audio books and everything. It's royalties attached to that. You know what I'm saying? And that's that's where I, I come in and be like, hey, look, you, know, you get all these royalties because. <laughs> yes, sir. Because hey, wow. they got all because they all, all they gonna do is sit there. You know what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. they're they're actually up sixty percent from six years ago. So, oh, you know that oh, wow. that's my whole thing and my whole guidance of um, of doing the book is just to educate on the business side of um, and how to run a business as well as uh, being an artist. Because you know this music is gonna outlive you. So who are you, who are you gonna pass it down to? It's gonna go to somebody else. It's gonna go to CD Baby CEO or, or whatever, and sit in their bank account when, you know, when they can go to your family and everything. Yeah, you like Courtney. Um, one thing I love about Courtney, uh, just the mindset. Kim, like you had said earlier, Kim is the person that's known to create them. Yes, it's like oh, we said no. Oh, okay. We, you sure we said no? Is that a hard no? Okay. <laughs> so she'll go around and be like, no, we got a yes. And so Courtney um, label started from all the no's. You started Benjamin Entertainment Group from all the no's. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. Started with all the no's. And, and I was like, sure. Well, since everybody don't say no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read me some books. I'm going to start my own label. How about that? Yeah. Yeah. And then okay. started the publishing company. <laughs> And I just treat the songs like they're like they're real estate properties. All my songs are real estate properties. You know, you always got to keep them going. Always got to keep them occupied. So that's that's my whole goal, and that's my whole goal to get every artist out of that hobby mindset and into a business mindset. Okay, okay. that's great. Next up, we have Melanie Smiles. Melanie, tell the folks about you and about your book. Hi, my name is Melanie Smiles, and. Uh, I am a registered nurse, specialized in emergency nursing, trauma, and critical care. Uh, and as like Ms. T.T. said, I do work at one of our main trauma centers in the Detroit Medical Center. Um, I'm also a business owner of Mindful Mission Health and Wellness, where I bridge the gap between patients, doctors, and the insurance companies. Uh, and I'm also the author of the book, My Broken Smiles, Beautifully Broken. It is a book about um, my personal experience and testimony with brokenness, um, love, pain, hardships, my life struggles, me having two kids before graduating high school, um, and marrying someone who was also broken, someone who was a uh, covert um, narcissist and sociopath. And um, I share how I overcame my brokenness. Uh, my healing process and transformation with the word of God and spiritual influences. And the reason why I wrote about my experience and brokenness, because brokenness is something that we all can't escape. It's something that we all can relate to. Um, And brokenness comes in all many different forms and faces, including anxiety, depression, shame, guilt, unhealthy behavior patterns, um, addictions, and if we don't fix the root cause of our brokenness, we will continue to hurt and also hurt other people. And I say often that hurt people hurt other people. Mm-hmm. So we don't get to the root cause of our brokenness. We continue to, you know, damage few other relationships and including ourselves. And also brokenness isn't always bad. Um, you know, brokenness could be a way of restoring, trans, um, transforming your life, um, and living a life of fulfillment because sometimes there is uh, demolition um, is 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 needed before you can rebuild, you know, on the inside. So um, it has some of the foundation, I guess, of what Dr. Laura and Sharni's book may include. Um, mm-hmm. So that's why um, I wrote the book about brokenness, you know, because this also can be some healing and brokenness. Yes. So. yes. It's how the light gets in. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Woo. Come on now. Don't take me there today or tonight. <laughs> but thank you, Melanie. Ah, oh, Mrs. Calvin. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I like saying that, y'all. She got an awesome husband. Uh, he's super dope. He just you like he you you ain't gonna approach him if you saw him. You ain't gonna. Mm-mm. But he he's a big old teddy bear. He's super dope. And one thing I can say, and don't kill me, um, when I met 
this woman in our church. She gave the most amazing hugs. I used to hate hugging her when I was going through something or feeling some kind of way because I will always break down crying in her arms when she oh. hugged me. And I used to be like, I ain't going to hug her today. Mm-mm, mm-mm, <laughs> I'm not going to do it. And she just would hug me and I'm like, gonna do it, gonna do it. So yeah, um, amazing. But yes, go ahead, please tell the people about you and about your book. Well, so my book project um, was, um, it was a collaboration. There are six other women authors, a part of my book. And um, we all were um, members of a each different church. All of us went to a different church, but we came together to meet and found out that all of us had been through a divorce. And so um, in that process, as we began to tell our story, one of the young ladies who was the lead author of the book decided that she would do this collaboration and that we would join together and do the book. So each person had a chapter that they had to write. So my day job is that I'm a clinical mental health um, therapist, as well as a life coach, as well as a minister, <laughs> as well as a substance abuse counselor. So I have a lot of hats that I carry. Um, but one thing that I realized is that I had never told my story about my divorce. And I had been married um, when the divorce was final. We separated at 17 years and the divorce was final three day, three years later. And what I realized is that me feeling like I had done everything that I was supposed to do in the marriage, that it was no need for me to talk about it. I just moved on with my life. And um, as I was in prayer, the Lord revealed to me that there is a message in your divorce. And because you never told anybody, all of those people that you've come in contact with, that's like, wow, what happened to her husband? Or, you know, she's just going on with life like nothing ever happened. And, you know, just seems like she's okay. Um, there were people that needed to know, you know, that um, not being um, bitter about it and not sharing a negative side to it, but more sh- more so the reality and the positive side to it, so to speak, um, when it comes down to what God has to say about it. And so I ran into so many women um, in ministry and women who felt like God hates me um, because I want to get a divorce um, or that they just didn't understand that they could get married again once they dealt with it and then healed and then emerged into moving on that God would still be able to bless them. And so, um, so many women came to me and said, you know, how hurt they were and how they couldn't see themselves moving on. And so I was like, you know, it's time to share that story. And so my whole goal with sharing the story was not to bash or not to have all of these negative, you know, comments, but to show that, you know, I lived a regular life. I didn't, I was married as a virgin. I, um, got married at a young age because it was what, you know, the church said I should do. I did what I was supposed to do by the vows. So my book, uh, my chapter in the book is actually called Broken Covenant, but I followed the rules. And um, in that chapter, it talks about, it has like subtitles of each area, like the for better, for worse, the richer, poor, the sickness and in health. We encounter all of that in those 17 years. And so um, the till death do us part was the big piece for me because I too struggled with that. Like I was supposed to stay in this, you know, until death, um, you know, do us part. But what God revealed to me in my prayer prayer is that the death is when he's taken out of it. So you do the covenant, but it's not a physical death that you die. When you, when the marriage dies is when God dies out of it. And Mm -hmm. so people being in a place to feel like the till death do us part meant that we both one or the other or both were supposed to die a physical death is not what God meant about the covenant. You know, God is saying that, you know, there is reasons why people separate and people go, you know, in different directions. And it doesn't mean that I don't love you. And it doesn't mean that you did anything that was bad by 
getting separation in that divorce because that's not the death. It's when the three court became separated and God was no longer in it. So yes. that's what the book is about. Mm -hmm. And um, that's what my chapter is about. But this set is seven women total and everybody had their own story when it came to divorce. And I'm glad I did it. <laughs> Good girl. Awesome. Um, so I'm glad that you guys had the opportunity to kind of give a little brief overview about your book, a little bit about who you are. Um, I think I've had the opportunity to have everyone except Sharnice on uh, alone. Um, because although we're going to have a part two and maybe part three, I believe that um, after this run tonight that people are want to, it's so much to unpack. And so... Um, in light of Mental Health Awareness Month, just listening, like in Kimyana's book, she talks about a lot of different things. She talks about love. She talks about, you know, relationships as well. There's a lot of that. Um, Swifty, he talks a little bit about that from a man's perspective. Um, Courtney's book is more musical and, and industry driven, but Courtney story like Courtney needs I said this I said Courtney got enough knowledge you can pin about several more books this one this first one is just about the industry but for the listener and the viewers I think that tonight they have the opportunity because there's somebody that is the entrepreneur who doesn't know how to get started or got started and started several times like what do you call that this is a question that's for Courtney and Kimyana I'm gonna throw it at you too <laughs> what do you call a person that, and this ain't no, this ain't no, what you call that? This is not a, um, what's some things kids always like, what's the riddle? This is not a riddle. I really don't know the answer. So what do you call the person that starts a, a, a career or starts something and they don't finish it, then they start something else and then they don't finish it and they start something else? <laughs> They're not a story entrepreneur. <laughs> Hey, business, business, ADHD. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Yeah, is that, Dr. Laura, is that a real term? <laughs> well, I think I, you know it's yeah, or it's somebody that's, that's so afraid of success because they they're afraid to succeed because then they could lose it or believe that they don't deserve it. Facts. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> mm. Now, one thing I love about having Dr. Laura on is like she always finds the mental thing. <laughs> she always gets. I'm like, okay, so Dr. Laura, she'd be like, she be sitting back. So I'm just happy. I'm just happy. <laughs> so yeah, I, I agree with that. I think one of my biggest fears, being a serial entrepreneur, um, being that girl too, is that I think I used to be afraid. What if I can? I was always told a lot of you can't this as far as you go, or I was left in a position like, okay, I give my all and then the train taking off and I'm, I'm like, I'm grabbing my bags. And then it's like the door closed and you run along the train like, wait, I, and they see you, but they act like they don't see you like, oh, oh, okay. Okay. So now I'm at, a, at the, the, the place in life where I'm on the train. I'm not running beside the train anymore. Um, I've decided I don't really know how to steer it, but I'm on it. I'm learning from the conductors. I've worked with a lot of great conductors, Kenyana, Courtney. My husband, he taught me a lot in this business. He was my first, I would say victim, but not victim. <laughs> he was my first best friend. Um, he was the first person that let me be an assistant. And he let me help broker, a, a, like to me, it was a big deal. Like him opening up for Akon and he let me go out and nail it. And I'm like, I was talking a good game. Like, I got it, I got it. I didn't know what the hell I was doing. I was like, okay, I'm gonna talk my way through it. I, I, I think I know enough. And so I went in and uh, that was an amazing thing. And it was one of those, I'm a serial entrepreneur that keeps starting stuff. Like I just asked y'all, what is you call them people? Cause I got several friends that's like that. Yeah. But you finally get to where Dr. Laura said is that you think like you, you can't. Mm -hmm. And so I finally said, I can't. Yeah. So what I what I found is if if I can kind of chime in is that people, um, in my experience, people that are like that, they haven't been able to connect their faith with the success side of it. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of us, because we we don't have the faith, 
that or you know we're not in faith and we we don't see it you know the way god sees it or the way you know it needs to be seen we're afraid of the success part of it we're afraid to be successful or somewhere you know throughout our life like you said someone told us that we couldn't or you know this is a, a true story of someone that i know you know he he was afraid of being successful because every time he would do something good, he would get in trouble because one of his siblings wasn't as smart as he was. So mm. he decided that he just, he was afraid to be successful. So there's all different mm. types of reasons, but for the most part, I think it's the, the, the faith and success connecting them together. That's interesting. Yeah. Now I would like to know, out of everything you've poured into your book, the writing process, I'm going to go around. What, Swifty, starting with you, what, how did you get ready to write your book? Um, <laughs> it's been on the back of my mind for years. And um, I guess it was a thing to where I wasn't ready to tell my story. I wanted to, to tell my story personally attached to the D12 story. And um, I guess it was just me, you know, mustering up the confidence to tell the world all of the the hardships that I went through as a youngster, you know, uh, thinking about my family, thinking about my father, you know, what would they think and things of that nature. So it just, just, it just hit me one day. I mean, like when I'm feeling uninspired and I think I got writer's block and I might not never want to write a rap again. <laughs> I declare blue sky, something just hit me and I just keep running with it. So it's the same with this book. Um, it just hit me out the blue and said, you know what? This is your story. Um, God gave me the confidence that I needed in order to tell my story. I wasn't feeling self-conscious or worrying about what other people thought, you know, from my story and just put it in full effect. And then like the faith factor, you know, at first I didn't have the faith to go forth with it. And then I thought, and I said, you know what? This story attached to the, the music part might inspire somebody to want to keep going. You know what I'm saying? So I was kind of looking at how it might affect other people in ways to where they can get motivated and not stop and want to keep going in that aspect. So once I thought of it on that level, that inspired me to want to do it because it was for someone else to to grab onto and to learn from and to, to be better from or whatnot. But when... I was harboring all it to myself, but then when I start thinking of other people, I think their inspiration hit much tougher. You know what I'm saying? So it just hit me out the clear blue sky. And God said, you know what? This is not for you. This is for other people to get motivated by because, you know, I blessed you with the opportunity to do the things you wanted to do. Now you must break through that fear to give somebody else that confidence. So, okay. yeah. Charnice, what? how did you get in the mindset of preparing to write your book. I can totally agree with you as far as the, um, the courage and um, um, it actually took, it took courage because I have had, so I had so many stories and then I zoomed in and felt like it wasn't about one particular person. Um, it was so many stories, so many different circumstances, so many situations that I was dealing with, but I was internalizing it. I just was holding it, keeping it within. Yep. And I realized that it was affecting my life period. You know, as you grow older, uh, some of the things you endure affects you as you grow. And with the book, um, I felt like it's time. I need to tell this story. I need to tell it. And like I said, it's not about one particular particular person. Um, uh, in the book, it talks about uh, molestation. It talks about drugs. It talks about infidelity. It talks about um, uh, heartache. It talks about pain. It talks about sickness. It talks about so much. But in each chapter of the book, the Lord gave me scriptures to dwell on and a prayer to close out each chapter that can relate to it. Like one chapter is let it go. One chapter is you have the victory. Uh, one chapter is the pain of sorrow. So it's different chapters, but the Lord after, like I said, I started it, I would pick it up and it seemed like the enemy was coming against me every time I start writing a book. Something would always happen where I just put it to the side just put it to the side. And this went on for several years. But like I said, when the pandemic hit 
I said, you know what? Let me complete this. The Lord was just pressing on me. Get it done. Get it done. And I had different people encouraging me. I had my children. I would talk to them about it. I would let them read a little. And they like, wow, mom. Wow. So you know what? The pandemic hit last year. I I mean, I zoomed in, I zoomed in and I just gave it my all. And I just believe God connected me with the correct, the right people, the editor, the publishing company. It was nothing but God. I mean, everything. And I'm just so grateful for it. And again, I believe that this book will help so many people. And I do. I'm working on another one. (laughs) Mm -hmm. I'm working on a part two, uh, if not part two, a sequel, something that's going to relate because I feel like I could have told so much more. Right. So much more. So that's what was my motivation was for writing the book, you know, just to help so many people, because I know that you can be healed. Amen. Amen. Dr. Laura, I know your your career, as long with your journey, helped compile everything that you put in it. But what really got you going? And I know just like Sharni said, Swifty said. It was really seeing the re-victimization, initially it was the re-victimization by the system of people, the professionals, the helpers that didn't really understand domestic violence and that didn't really understand how to safety plan and were not believing people or expecting things to look a certain way or you know, giving people mental health diagnoses because they didn't understand that it was, you know, trauma symptoms. It's about, you know, what happened to them and not what's wrong with them. And it made my blood, I'd wake up in the middle of the night and my blood would boil. Um, And so that started, and like I said, I also struggle with some ADD, ADHD. I'm always doing 627 things at a time. I also have a little dyslexia. So, you know, I kept moving sentences around and doing things. And by the time the book came out, you know, then the internet had talked about a bunch of stuff. But I think for me, the biggest deal, a lot like Darnica, did I say your name right? I want to make sure I said it right. Darnica. I knew, however I said it, I didn't want to not say it, but I knew I'd say it wrong and I apologize for that. Okay. Um, You know, I realized that I had never told my story. Mm -hmm. You know, I was, I mean, I'm going to be 61 next month and, you know, the book came out, I don't know, I think in 17 or I think it came out right before 2018. And it was really the first time my story had ever been out there. There were a lot of people that knew me that you know, that I had worked with. And it's not because it was a secret. It was just so long ago, I never really thought about talking about it. So I had written all these composites in the book and done all sorts of things. And then it didn't have an ending. It just kind of dropped dead. And I thought, well, I guess, you know, it ends with, and then the very last story is my own. Mm. You know, it's mm-hmm. kind of, it talks about you know, all the things I've done professionally and all that stuff. But, you know, that's just kind of what gave me some of the experiences, but I really didn't put my own in there. And that was a very big deal. Um, It was probably the, you know, the biggest deal. Interestingly enough, we talk about being placed in the right position, God placing us. I'm now writing a second book um, in a much more formalized, whatever you want to call it, Uh, format um, with a professional program and with editors. And it's going to be called how to have a healthy relationship in an unhealthy world. Because Mm -hmm. what I found was I've worked with so many people whose normal has been trauma and abuse and unhealthy. And they're like, Laura, I know about this stuff. They either read it on the internet all day or they've been living it all day. And they're like, what I don't know is how to have a healthy relationship. What I don't know is is how to move forward in a healthy way with everything I've been through. So, you know, I kind of was talking to a girlfriend who writes fiction and she said, oh, Laura, I'm doing this program. Why don't you do it with me the next day or within less than a week? I'm in this program writing this new book that I hadn't even planned to write that then I had to come up with a title. So I did. And, you know, now the book's going to be out in September. You know, it was just all fell out because that's the way it's supposed to happen. Very well, very well. Kimyana, being in the industry and wearing the several hats you wear, 
and compiling because you have different chapters, different pieces to mm -hmm. your book and you have a lot going on. And that's something that you do struggle with. And I know because I'm your assistant. <laughs> but how did you actually make the time to pin that book? Yeah. So um, it's funny that uh, Dr. Laura said that she kind of struggles with the ADHD, ADD thing type of thing. Cause I, it was something I never thought about until I got an adult. But I had all these little pieces of paper everywhere. So I had like <laughs> notebooks and stuff. I had like part of part of the book was in one notebook. Another part of the book was in another notebook. I, I just recently found an envelope that I had written some stuff on. It was packed away. And I was like, oh, my God, like here's some of my notes. Um, so it it was definitely um, an interesting process for me. I actually had to voice record a lot of it and have it um, transcribed because I was, I was so busy, you know, um, on top of being busy, um, I was going like, you know, um, Darnesia and, and others, I was going through a divorce. It was, a, it was a whole lot of things happening, a whole dynamic of things that was happening in my life at the same time. Um, but I knew that I needed to finish. I knew mm -hmm. I needed to finish because every time I would try to stop um, something like, you know, many others, something would happen. You know, um, there would be some clear, for sure, clear sign that um, the enemy was trying to keep me from doing this book down to, I remember um, being in the parking lot. I had gotten my final edits from the editor. I'm sitting in the parking lot at a grocery store and I read like part of it. I call myself kind of. Uh oh. Oh no! Oh, okay. <laughs> You're back. Okay. <clears throat> oh. Okay. Oh, you froze. You there? That's me, Kim. Technology is bothering everybody. <laughs> right. Okay. I think I think she paused. She might be trying to reboot. We're gonna jump to you, Courtney. As soon as Kim come back, I'll bring her back in. So tell us, Courtney, um, and we'll we'll pick back up with Kimyana as soon as she comes back. I don't know what happened. How did you get ready to put your book form? Because I know you always on the go. And I'm also your assistant as well. So I know you always <laughs> all over the place. How did you uh make time yeah. to pin your book? Um, I, I just um, I just use my Apple iPhone notes and um, a, a little app, a, a free app called Otter, and I was able to like speak, speak, speak on like different topics, and then just go for it, and then it transcribes it automatically for you, and it's free. Um, and I, I saw the bigger picture, and then what really hit me to um, to not stop was. Um, just the fact that this artist was like right to the brinking point to where he was about to get, get his royalties back, get his business set up the right way from uh, back in the Motown era. And he passed away three days before uh, the signature was ready to be done. And I was wow. like, okay, I gotta get this out here, man. Cause you know, so, so no other artist goes through anything like that. So like now mm. we don't even have access to get his family, all of the back royalties and um, all the lawsuits and stuff and things that went wrong back then that he could that he had to you know to regain so it's like it's it's just lost now wow so that that is i just just knowing that that this whole thing is just bigger than me and uh by me stepping out on faith because like like swift even tell you i didn't even know what itunes was when we first started with this thing i was like uh yeah i was like huh you say what i i how you get this music on here but then <laughs> it's just over the <laughs> <laughs> just over over the years, just learning and 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 um and reading books and actually doing the stuff that I'm teaching, and and getting on stages and stuff and um and Dave and, and shout out to David Shans too, he had pulled me to the pulled side because like I, I suffered a little bit from um imposter syndrome because like I felt like I wasn't worthy of being in the rooms and then David Shans pulled me to the side and was like, bro, you got it, man. He was like, man, you ain't ever gotta feel like. You know, we've been doing this 20 years. 
you know, just because you see it's, you know, it's, it's easier for us to stand on stage and talk in front of all these people. But like, I remember throwing conferences and it was just my wife there, you know, to, for me to teach and doing seminars and stuff like that. And now, you know, speaking to the mass, I still get a little nervous. I ain't gonna lie to you. You know, just, you know, just look at them loud people. I just look over their head and just keep Absolutely. talking, you know, but, Absolutely. but, it, but it, it's, it's just a blessing to know that this is bigger than me. So that's what, that's what made me, you know, get everything together though. <laughs> What's up? Kimyana, uh, we lost you for a minute. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I was just saying that um, in the process of, of writing my book, um, I was I was actually reading some of the edits and I decided to go into the grocery store. And when I went into the, was headed into the grocery store, a car came flying through the parking lot and actually hit me in the parking lot. Okay. A lot of people don't know this part of the story. And um, it, it it didn't hit me hard enough to harm me, but it hit me hard enough to knock me down. Like literally they stopped this close and bumped me and it knocked me down and I jumped up and I went in the grocery store and finished my shopping. And this guy followed me around the store and he's like, ma'am, are you okay? Are you okay? And I'm like, yeah, I'm fine. So I get back in my car and I get all the way home. And once I got home, I said to myself, you have to finish this book. You have you have to finish this book because that had, things like that was happening to me like too often. Like it was it was actually kind of scary how often it was happening. And I realized like, you know, just like Courtney just said that it was much bigger than me. Like it didn't matter you know, what I was going through, what phase I was in my life, how many things I had going on. I needed to finish that book because it was it was a ministry. It was something that people needed to have in their hands and that they could, you know, um, use. It was practical. I wanted to make sure that it was something that was um, an easy read. You know, I don't want people to be, you know, pick it up and then put it down. I wanted them to pick it up and keep reading and want to read it over and over again and go back to certain chapters. So that's kind of how it happened for me. Very nice. I'm hearing something. I'm going to sum it up on our way as we close out. I'm hearing something. I've, I've been present. Of course, I'm present. But I've been present listening. Melanie, uh, tell us, like, you know, I, I, I personally know, but I want you to share with the listeners, the viewers, and your fellow panelists how you had the time and what got you to write your book. Um, I was actually... I actually connected to a um, ministry network, um, still is called Speak Life Ministries, led by um, Minister Letitia Nicole. And she invited me on a cruise. Um, it's called Our Story, His Glory Cruise. And she inspired me to get up in front of a, in, at the conference and give my testimony of all the things that I uh, been through. So I said, okay, I'll do it. And um, after that, um, she asked me if I would uh, be a contributing author to uh, her book, Our Story, His Glory. I think it was 16 authors in the book uh, contributing our testimony um, on how God got the glory on the things that we went through. And um, I did it, um, which that was something very unusual for me because I'm a very private person. And I'm thinking like, I'm about to put my business out there. Uh, but I, I, wrote the, I wrote it. And after that, I was inspired to write my own book, uh, which was basically a, a, a bigger version of story of our story, his glory. And um, I was thinking at first, like, well, how am I going to remember all of this stuff that happened? And I found out that when you've been traumatized by something, you can definitely, you know, remember so many things and details of what happened, you know, opposed to um, someone that haven't been through what you've been through. So I ended up writing it and ended up writing my book and it just flowed and it was full. I was writing with so much emotion and passion. It was actually therapeutic and it actually helped me get through and write the book, you know, pretty fast. And um, when I finished writing the book and it was published, it did so well. I mean, it probably sold over, I know it sold over a thousand copies and became bestseller. And I was getting so many calls and emails from people that can relate to my situation and the things that I've been through, especially when I, um, cause in my, in my book, I 
like I said, I married a, a narcissist. He was actually diagnosed. So I'm not just putting it out there. I know narcissist is going around like a, a broad word. Everybody is calling someone a narcissist, but it is it is truly a uh, mental disorder, so a personality mm -hmm. disorder. Mm -hmm. And I speak about the signs and traits and unhealthy behavior patterns of narcissistics and their narcissists and their characteristics. And I had so many people. Um, calling me and emailing me about their story um, that they read my book and actually was looking to me for, for counseling. And I'm like, I'm not a counselor. I just wrote my, you know, my story, but it was ministry. And I believe that it was, it was purposed, you know, so in the way things just connected with the publisher and how, you know, God just, just, you know, put it in my spirit and it just did so well and still is doing good. So uh, I say it was God. That made me sit down and make time to do it. So. Well said, well said. Mm -hmm. Denisha, how, how, what, you know, <clears throat> I know you were part of a team of women, different mm -hmm. walks of life, different places, but how did you get yourself ready to write? Um, I have to say it was truly God. Like, part of me not telling my story was still me having some, um, I would say like unresolved um, concerns and just what would people think and why would people care, you know, about my story and what happened. And so actually with us all coming together, what the girlfriend that actually invited me to her church, which was where the young lady went to church as well, that's the lead author. And after church, we were talking about it and that's kind of how it happened. Um, she and I have been friends for years. We went to school together, you know, have been friends for years. And I didn't know her story and she didn't know mine. And so as we were talking about it, she's like, oh, we have to do this, you know, like encouraging. And I still felt some reserve and still felt some kind of way. And I remember them having it set up that we would have a writing coach. And so the writing coach was supposed to listen to us tell our story from like a perspective, you know, from like a half an hour, she was supposed to talk to each person. So, you know, she was talking to each person that had a schedule for to come in. And I remember me being so worried. I mean, I, my stomach was turning and everything like, okay, when I tell this lady my story, she's going to be like, okay, and what, you know, like, um, that's what people go through every day or that's, you know, so I was really, really nervous. And then when we got to to our session and I was like well I'm trying to think if I should go this way or that way and I really don't know and she was like just tell me your story and so as I was talking she was just really really quiet and every now and then I'd be like okay are you there you know are you there and so when I got finished um she was like I wish we had recorded this wow and I was like huh and she was like I wish we had recorded you telling me this She's like, there's nothing you need to change, fix, edit, nothing about your story. Like, all you need to do is come do it with a type. And I was like, wow, you know, and she was like, this right here is going to be so um, prevalent for women that are, you know, saved and that just have no voice um, to say you know, their side of the story. And she was like, you know, just do it. And she was like, there's nothing you need to change. You don't need to try to find no fancy words. You don't need to, none of that. She was like, just do it, you know? And after I hung up from her, I remember crying like, okay, God, like just a few weeks ago, you know, I was just saying, you know, I want to work with women. So I even, you know, I'm starting a nonprofit called Daughters of Strength, you know, just because I feel like women need that nurturing and need that support and that help. And not that men don't need it, but the fear factor of the things we fear um, that will cause judgment to us is so important. And so that was kind of like my push when, you know, in talking to the writing coach and then just knowing, you know, my conversations with God and what he was downloading. So that was like confirmation and it was cool. So I was ex I was more motivated after that to do it. And like everybody else has said, it, you know, so much bigger. It was so much bigger than me, so much bigger than what, you know, um, I thought it was about and thinking it was about me and what people would think of me and telling my story. So. Right. Well, 
tonight I've felt like I heard a lot of passion driven educational driven like self-made um mm -hmm. healing you know there's healing there's education there's inspiration and motivation from everybody's book when i was promoting and doing the commercials i was like there's something for everybody because everybody just had there's a broad broad um array of different stories here different books here and so being an entrepreneur being you know in relationships in and out of different type of relationships seeing the world going through trial and errors in life taking your traumas or taking your no's and your creating your yeses and manifesting every one of y'all mentioned the word god tonight because without him, we wouldn't be here. That's firstly. I'm not here to push and do anything to anybody, but I heard everybody. Everybody understands um, that there's, there's a ram in the bush for every one of us. There's been an extended lifeline extended to each and every one of us. A lot, y'all might not know, but Kim Yana's also a minister, okay? And so um, there's purpose attached to every one of us. I attended an amazing event called glow and i went out with courtney and christina to um do a performance and we had the opportunity christina and i to attend the conference and they did this piece when they talked about your purpose being attached when we want to mm -hmm. give up or we feel like ah, i can't do it anymore this is not for me we have to be mindful i heard several of you say this tonight it's not about me. Mm -hmm. It's not about me. What I have to do, the, the near death experience Kenyatta had getting hit by a car, even though you didn't get hurt, hurt, you still could have been. But in your mind, I wouldn't have been thinking about, like, I got to finish this book. I did, like, I'm about to sue them. That's what I'm about to do. Something <laughs> crazy, right? But it was more of a, I have to finish this. It takes it back to the piece that Courtney said earlier when you die and you go on, what's left? Where's your legacy going? You existed here on earth. Your life work won't go for nothing. And so uh, we, we're over our time. And I, I want to go back really quickly. One piece of advice you want to give to the listener. And one thing you think that they will get from reading or listening to your book. We'll start with Sharnice. Okay. Um, one advice, one piece of advice I would like to give to the listener is that we all have a story and no matter how shameful you may feel about it, how disappointed, how embarrassed, God is a healer and he is a deliverer and he can set you free from it. And um, just don't hold on to the negative. And do not suppress and suppress the issues. Talk about it. Make it known. That's a problem. A lot of people like to keep everything in. And believe it or not, when you suppress everything, that makes you sick. And you have to forgive. You have to let it go. If you do not, I said earlier that the forgiveness is for you. But suppressing it and just withholding, keeping it to yourself. No, talk about it. Talk about it. That's my advice. Do not keep it within. Talk about your, if it's a counselor, if it's in prayer, if it's your minister, if it's your pastor, talk about it. Do not be afraid and don't feel like what you've gone through, you are ashamed of. Everything happens for a reason and a season. Amen to that. Amen. Uh, Courtney, you want to tap in? Um, I would say just trust God, trust the process, and God blesses order. So you may be holding yourself back. You may be getting in your own way just not, just by not organizing and instructing yourself. That's that's one thing that I got big in my book that I hope everybody get. Structure, organization, strategy, trust God, and trust the process. Amen. Good word. Melanie? Um, I want to say that um, broken people hurt other people, but healed people heal other people's and mm. brokenness is an alignment with 
unfulfillment, uh, a need that is unmet. And the antidote to that is fulfillment, which is a need that only God can meet. Yes. So, very well. I said, I like that. I would like to say that um, my advice piece would be to trust the process and respect the pain. Mm. Um, you can trust the process and respect the pain that you go through. You will know that you can grow through. And I think that that's the thing that we have that blocks us and stops us. So we have the process there. We don't trust it. And then in our not trusting the process, then respecting the pain, it's just not going to happen because we can't, we feel like we can't move on past the pain. So if we respect it and know that it's there for us to grow, then we'll be able to do the things that we thought we could never do. And so in that, that's the advice that I would like to give. And for those people who have been married and have experienced divorce, what I would ask you to take away from this is understanding if you are punishing yourself with what you think God believes about you, God loves you. Amen. Nice. nice. Dr. Laura. Um, I guess my thought would be that we all have, you know, things that happen to us many times. It's most times it's not our fault, but what we do with that pain isn't our fault, but it's our responsibility. And by taking responsibility for healing and moving forward, that takes the power away from the person that hurt us and gives it back to ourselves. And, you know, the, the healing is our responsibility. Amen. Amen to that. Swifty? Um, just to piggyback on the Dr. Laura, um, God gave you a gift called life and what you do with it is you'll give back to God and um, don't never give up on your dreams. I mean, you know, you might get a thousand no's, but there's a, a chance that things is going to work out with you. But if you give up, there's absolutely no chance at all that that dream is going to happen if you give up. So stick in there. Don't never give up on your dreams. Amen. Good words, sir. Kimiana? <laughs> Um, I think my my piece of advice would be um, that there is power in the struggle. And we all have struggles. We all have obstacles. We all have adversities. We all have things <clears throat> that, you know, blocks, roadblocks, if you will, that will come up that will keep us from moving forward or keep us from our purpose. And um, when those things come up, I think that we have to view perspective as everything. We have to view our struggles not as what we quote unquote think a struggle is, but view it from the perspective of, okay, there's this struggle. Now, how do I get around this struggle? How do I get through this struggle? How do I keep pushing through to get to the next level? So they told me no, and they told me no last week and the week before and the week before that. But I'm going to keep pushing forward and I'm going to get that yes. Or I'm going to create that yes. Right. So um, that would be my piece of advice um, to kind of connect it to the book. I, I really think that the takeaway um, from any reader is that the struggle is real. It's mm -hmm. not, it's never going to go away. We Like, you know, everybody has said it's, it's something that we all experience, but it's about what you do with it. And Amen. on the other side of struggle, there's success. Amen. Amen. Well, I want to thank each and every one of you for a wonderful interview. Um, what y'all up there doing, two fellas? What y'all doing? <laughs> All success. All success. All success. Okay, right. success. Thank you, Swiffy McMahon. Exactly. Thank you, Swiffy <laughs> McMahon. Thank you. I, I, totally I didn't even see that. I didn't see it either. That's great. Um, I really, really feel full from this interview, I look forward to part two. Um, I also look forward to bringing you guys on individually. I know a lot of you are working on some upcoming things. We went over our, our mark, but it was just good. And and I don't like to stop it when it's good. I could go on and on, but I will not on today. Um, what I take away, what I would like to tell people is live in the moment. Live in the moment. 
Um, the next moment's not promised. Um, and enjoy every moment. Mm -hmm. As I've gotten older, although I still deal with some trauma, I'm th I thank God every day that I am where I am right now. I live the life that I live. I strive to be better. I'm sure we all do. But I look and say, life is good compared to where I came from. And if I keep looking forward, I tell people to keep your head to the north, right? We did a lot of looking to the south, and we don't need to do that anymore. We need to look to the north. Keep going forward. So with that being said, I want you guys to have a wonderful night. I appreciate you guys. I will be sharing um, a thank you for checking us out, and I will be providing your websites. I have all of your websites, um, your your um, social handles. I'll be creating that. I'll be sharing that, and I will be sharing this show. It'll be airing. It's live now on several different platforms, but I've managed to learn how to even put it on headliner. Shout out to Courtney. He be keeping me updated. Um, so this is good stuff. Um, this is really good stuff. And I'm just excited about what God has been doing with you. I thank, I thank you for going through your trials. If you didn't have your trials, you wouldn't have testimonies to share. You wouldn't have the substance to give to me to give to others, because it ain't about us, right? It's not yeah. about us. Thank you for pulling it all together. Yes, thank you, yeah. TT. Yeah, you are, you you. are the truth that, that pulls yeah. it all and holds it all together. So, I yes. receive that. that I really good. appreciate yeah. being on the show. Yeah. Thank well, you thank so you. much. It's been a pleasure. Well, I want y'all yeah. to go ahead for everything y'all to put on hold. Rice on the stove, <laughs> boil and burn, and in the oven, whatever. Whatever you're doing, I want you to enjoy the rest of your night. I will see you guys soon, and I'll be in touch to get us together again for part two. Amen. Amen. Bye. 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 Bye.